All right, let's go. Oh! You like that, old man? You want a piece of me? I don't want a piece of you. I want the whole thing! Oh! Price is wrong, <laughs> Well, he's sure right. The price is wrong. Welcome to Flynn Dog Woodwork. Today, we're going to be talking about woodpecker's tools. You see, when I first started woodworking, I noticed that every single YouTuber and their brother was using these tools on every single project. So, of course, I thought I had to have some for myself. But my question is, are there some better alternatives? So let's go find out. So when I first started woodworking, I used to watch channels like Whiskey Butterfly. At least I think that was his name. And we all know he's got a beautiful collection of red tools set up right behind his assembly table. And of course, if I wanted to be like Whiskey, I had to have the same tools as him. So I slowly began to accumulate a bunch of woodpecker's tools. And this is what I ended up with. I priced out each one of these items and Woodpecker's actually has a sale going on right now. But at today's prices, these are well over $1,000 in tools. And some of these tools I purchased before I had a high-end essential tool like the table saw or the miter saw. And last time I checked, you could probably buy both of those for the same price of those woodpeckers. What? And this isn't a video to bash on woodpeckers as I love these tools. These are American-made America. and you really can't beat the accuracy and precision. But most of us can't afford to drop $1,000 just on a bunch of rulers and squares. So we're gonna look at some alternatives and see if they can do the job. So here I have a collection of more affordable measuring devices that I've collected over the years. And I'm here to tell you that I still use these devices regularly. And what I'd like to do with this video is to take each one of these woodpecker's tools and see if we can get the same results with one of those more affordable tools. So let's grab our first woodpecker's device and see if we can find a more affordable alternative. So first up, let's take a look at these Paulini pocket rules. Pronounce names.com. Paulini. So the Paulini pocket rules are one of the least favorite tools that I've purchased. Now one of the nice things about these tools is they do have a little notch that allow you to place your pencil into it so you can scribe lines as you move it across your workpiece. And that's a really nice feature, as it allows you to easily scribe your lines and get the perfect measurement. Now to adjust this pocket rule, all you do is unscrew these two knobs and you can slide it to whatever depth you want. But this easily adjustable base is also one of the main problems with this tool. It doesn't give you enough support on the edge of your workpiece and your tool can twist and turn as you're doing your measurements. And that's why I think there's a better alternative, and that alternative is the combination square. With its large face on the base, it provides so much more support as you're scribing your lines. And this combination square is a Swanson square. Now Swanson is renowned for having high quality tools and you're gonna hear a couple of name brands that I tend to go with. And that's Swanson, Empire, and Woodraffic. So in my opinion, you can get the same results, if not better results with a decent combination square versus the Polini pocket rule. Now another thing that you can use this tool for is a height gauge. But I'll be honest, in my five years of owning this tool, I've never used it in this fashion. As I think some good old fashioned setup blocks work much better for those alignments. Now, if you're intrigued by the design of that Polini pocket roll, there's a bunch of cheaper knockoffs out there that are available on Amazon. Now, I don't have any experience with these brands. However, if I were to do it all over again, I would probably go with one of those brands. So let's move on to our next woodpecker's tool and take a look at it. Now the next tools I want to take a look at are these delve squares. It's expensive. Let's take a look at these tools and see if there's an alternative. So I think everybody can probably guess a decent alternative to these delve squares. And that's the good old fashioned speed square. However, there are some features on the delve square that are worth noting. The first feature is the base of the delve square. There's a half inch, a three eighths inch, a quarter inch, as well as a three quarter inch step on the very base. And once again, that's a feature that's nice on this tool. However, I've never used that feature for any sort of setup. I migrate towards the setup blocks once again. The second feature that's worth noting are the little holes that run down the spine of the tool. These are at every eighth of an inch and you can use these to scribe out your material. 
But once again, that's a feature that I rarely use with this tool, as I have other tools that I prefer to use for this function. So for me, I find myself only using the delve square as a square itself or to create those 45 degree angles. So what's a better alternative for this tool? Well, you guessed it, it's the speed square. And here I have two brands of speed square. I have the classic Swanson as well as an Empire. And for me, I prefer the seven inch speed square. These two tools have so many functions that I've done an entire video just on the speed square. So if you haven't seen it, go check that out. But most importantly, they provide all the features that I used with that delve square. You can do your 45 degree angles or your square measurements or just check if something is square. And you can typically get either one of these squares for less than $10 a pop. It's a little less expensive. And one thing you're gonna recognize with a lot of these woodpeckers tools is they do have a lot of extra features, but the real question is, are you gonna use those features? And for me, in my everyday woodworking, I'm finding that the answer is typically no. Well, let's move on to our next woodpeckers item, which really couldn't be any more simple. And that tool is the woodworking rule. Let's take a look at these two tools and I'll tell you how I use them. So what I chose to go with is a 24 inch ruler as well as a six inch ruler. And what do I use this for? Well, you guessed it, to draw straight lines. In order to make straight lines, you need to make decisive movements all the way from your shoulder. But there is another feature with these rulers that I do use occasionally. And that is the center scale. If we look at the exact center of this ruler, you'll see a zero and it measures out from both sides of that zero. This is great for finding the center of a workpiece or if you need to measure out from the center of that workpiece. And both the larger ruler and the smaller ruler have this, but this is a feature that I only use occasionally. Instead, I find myself using these two rulers simply to strike out straight lines. And obviously there's a much cheaper alternative. And that's simply any straight edge. Here I've got a couple, one's a stainless steel ruler as well as a Powertech straight edge. And these are just as fine to use other than those more expensive rulers. And if you're looking for that center scale feature, there's a lot of cheaper options out there. I don't have a cheaper option as I already have those woodpeckers. However, I'll leave some links in the description below so you can go check out some cheaper options. But I'll call a spade a spade and tell you that all these rulers are dead straight and they all perform the same function in drawing a straight line. Well, we're about halfway through these tools. As a reminder, I'm gonna leave links in the description below so you can go check out any of the tools that we take a look at today. Also, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave a like. It really does help out this small woodworking channel. Now let's move on to our next woodpeckers tool, which has become the standard for almost every single woodworker. And that tool is the standard square. This is my Richie Rich square. Oh. So let's grab these squares and start to talk about them. So if we take a look at these squares, you can see there's two different types of squares. There's the aluminum squares as well as the stainless steel squares. And in my opinion, the stainless steel squares are the only way to go. And that's because those aluminum squares don't have the notches that the stainless steel squares have that allow you to scribe out lines at every 16th of an inch. Now one of the reasons that woodpecker squares became so popular is because of the lips that allow you to fully support your square as you rest it up against the edge of your workpiece. This is something that things like framing squares just don't have and won't give you the support you need. Without that support, your framing square tends to fall off the edge and you can't get those perfectly square measurements. Now I already mentioned that the stainless steel squares are the only way to go, but let's talk about those aluminum squares. Now for me, the aluminum squares are simply a one trick pony. Hello. And I only use these to check for square. Since they don't have the notches along the base of the square, you can't really use these easily to scribe out lines. And if I'm just using those aluminum squares to check for square, there's a lot of cheaper options, including speed squares. Recently, I've fell in love with these machinist squares. These are extremely accurate and very reasonably priced. So rather than going with any of the aluminum woodpecker squares, I would suggest going with any of these cheaper options. But now let's talk about the aluminum squares. This aluminum 642 has by far been the most used square in my shop for a number of years. But is there a cheaper option for these stainless steel squares? Well, you betcha. I've recently fell in love with these new squares made by Wood Raffic. Now I've recently featured both of these wood graphic squares in recent videos, so I'm not gonna go into too much depth. However, I did wanna show you some of the features of these tools. So obviously this first square is a little bit longer than the six inch square. 
This is a 12 inch square. And as you can see, there's little holes to scribe lines at every 16th of an inch, just like the woodpecker square. This square also incorporates that lip, which has made those woodpecker squares so useful. And there really are very little differences between the woodpecker square and the wood graphic square. The biggest difference is the price. The wood graphic is less than half of woodpeckers. The other wood graphic square that I've recently purchased and been really impressed with is this T-shaped model. Let's take a look at it. So this square has a really unique feature with its four inch lip. This allows you to rest it on the very edge of your workpiece and give you plenty support as you scribe your lines back and forth. And that means it saves your lead. If you've ever worked with a woodpecker square, you know that you break your lead all the time in these little holes. This square not only has a four inch ruler to scribe your lines, but it also has a four inch lip to give you full support. And as I've said before, I think wood graphic is an excellent alternative to woodpeckers. I think this brand is gonna change the game for woodworking in the future. So we've covered almost every single woodpeckers tool that I have. We've got one more to take a look at, so let's go see if we can find a decent alternative. So the last woodpeckers tool that we're gonna take a look at is the T-square. The name is Mr. T. First name is Mr. Middle name is that period. Last name is T. This is probably my second favorite woodpeckers tool. So I primarily use this tool to break down sheet goods, and this is the TS32, which is 32 inches long. Now there's two features to this tool that I absolutely love. This tool has been a lifesaver when I'm going to break down my plywood. The first feature is this nine inch saddle. This completely cradles your plywood and makes the square rock solid. The second feature are all the little holes that run down the entire 32 inches at every 16th of an inch. With the large saddle support and all these tiny holes, it makes breaking down your plywood a breeze. Now this is one woodpecker's tool that I haven't seen an alternative for that I would trust enough to go with. However, I do have a compromise. Now before I had the TS32, I would typically go with a framing square. But once again, with no support on the bottom, this can be very difficult to get accurate measurements. That is, until I found the Swanson Framing Wizard. Let's go check out this tool. Now I featured this square on a previous video, so I'm not gonna go into too much depth, but this tool is great because it has something that every framing square needs, and that's a lip. And it's the lip on the very end of the framing square that allow you to place it on top of your plywood so that your square has full support. Now this is only a 16 inch square, which is obviously half of the TS32. However, it does give you enough span to start laying out your plywood. Now there's obviously no notches on the side of the square, but with its lip and its extended reach, this might be the perfect tool to help you lay out your plywood. So the point of this video was to show you that there are some alternatives to spending a whole lot of money on woodpeckers tools. Now there's no bashing here. I think woodpeckers is an excellent brand. However, the price range for these tools can be out of reach for a lot of woodworkers. It's expensive. And that's why I thought it was important to take a look at some of the cheaper alternatives. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video on checking out some of these cheaper alternatives. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and leave a comment. It really helps out this small woodworking channel. Until next time, take care as always.